Hello everyone and welcome to Stan the Wine Man TV. I am your host, Stan Rattan, and this is the Blue Collar Wine Program where I hope to help you spend your wine dollars wisely. And today we're going to look at a brand that I have long had a lot of respect for. They all roll in at eight bucks. You might call it a grocery store brand. I'm not so sure if I've seen it in a lot of, I mean, I'm sure grocery stores carry it. It's called Oak Grove. They're part of a bigger portfolio of wines, uh, which includes the label Happy Camper. But I think that $8 is a great price point as far as a budget wine. But we always say sometimes if you mark a wine up a little bit more, uh, people will buy it because it's more expensive. <clears throat> you know, sometimes the inexpensive brands, people look at it and go, ah, could that be any good? I'm not so sure. Of course, the group at my store, and they don't question that if I put my endorsement on it. And I'm not, not bragging here, but they trust me that if I put my endorsement on it, it's probably a decent wine. Case in point, I brought in the Chardonnay. It was a 2009 into the store. Uh, you know, it was getting a little bit old, but I tried it. You know, it was good. You know, it wasn't anything you're going to write home about, but it was decent Chardonnay. You know, I've just about burned through about 12 cases of that Chardonnay. Uh, it's almost gone uh, because, you know, I mean, my customers trust me. I mean, if I think it's decent, you know, they aren't afraid to buy it, even at five bucks. I wasn't going to sell it for any more than that because I'm not sure if it was worth any more than that. Anyway, let's get started. Oak Grove 2013 Viognier from California, so the Appalachian, that means they can source their fruit from anywhere in the state. It rolls in at eight bucks. There you go. There's the label. Label isn't like super fantastic. You know, I'm sure a label change would just cost some money, so you know, why would they do that? You know, that, you know, we don't want to do that. This is Viognier, and in the past I've been really happy with this wine. Uh, Viognier is an up and coming variety, it is very floral. Uh, it's got a lot of fruit on it, some more than others. Classic example is a, a Klein Viognier reminds me of a bowl of fruit salad and very fruit forward. So some people like that, some people don't, but there's all in between and all over. I also have a uh, French Viognier at the store that's very, very dry. So let's see what we get on the nose. So I get a little banana, uh, peaches, mangoes. A little bit of peach skin coming through, which is very typical of Viognier. Um, you know, I'm, I'm actually very, very excited that Viognier is taking off so strongly. It just shows that people are actually, you know, experimenting, looking around for different things to try. I encourage that. When You know, just our last episode, we talked about uh, Verdicchio and how good that is. And so, get a little bit of melon. I get some white flowers. Yeah, very, very expressive on the nose, which you would expect from a Viognier. Viognier, Viognier. It took me forever to, uh, for some reason, phonetically, I had a hard time saying that wine. I, I, it, it's so funny. I'm not making fun of anybody, but it's always funny to watch people try to say Viognier. Voignier is the one that um, often comes across. You know, it is. It's a tough one, but it's Viognier. That's how you'd say it. Let's see what we get on the palate. So this is a little drier, which I like. Some, you know, some like I said, some people don't like that fruit balmy. I get a little bit of a mango. I, interesting, I get a little bit of like a watermelon uh, component coming through. Peaches and peach skin is there. A little bit of lemon on the back end. You know, it's it's got good fruit. It's got good balance. It's dry, which I like, which makes it really, uh, you know, really good with food like uh, shellfish or salads or a noodle dish or something like that. You know, just something mellow. But this is a great deck wine if you're out on the porch, you're having some people over. Eight bucks a bottle. 
Now that's nothing really uh, to spend on a bottle of wine that is actually very nice. Simple, refreshing, delicious. And what, what more could you ask for in the summer for eight bucks a bottle? Good stuff. I like it. I'm going to go C plus, B minus on that one. Let's go on to the next one. The Chardonnay from Oak Grove. This is a 2012. And again, they all roll in eight bucks. I still love this Chardonnay. It's been a long time since I've tried it, so I'm really curious. Again, not much to look at as far as the label goes. It's exactly the same as the Viognier. The only difference is this Chardonnay. They all say, I believe they say reserve. Don't let that fool you. Reserve, yeah, they all say reserve. That really is quite meaningless, quite meaningless in the U.S., also in other countries like Chile, Argentina. It actually has a meaning in the old world. Reserve, but in the new world, you know, sometimes we get a little carried away with that word, reserve. So, let's see what we get on the nose. Got some oak. People like that. A little bit of butterscotch. A little bit of pear. That's interesting. I was curious about this. See a little bit of a baking spice coming through? You know, for, for eight bucks, they probably throw some oak chips in there. Um, you know, that's not uncommon. You should stick your nose up in the air. They do that because they want to put some oak on it, which a lot of people like. I mean, and you're not going to get it for eight bucks if you put it in a barrel. Sorry. They have the spindles, they have oak spindles that they put down in the barrel, neutral barrels, of course, to give it that oak flavor. They use oak dust sometimes. and Sometimes they use planks, they'll put planks in there to give it that oak flavor. And again, this is just a way to give you a flavor profile without putting a lot of money into it so they can pass that savings on to you. I'm not opposed to that at all. Let's see what we get on the palate. Expensive. They actually have a fakey flavor to them. I don't know how other, almost like a chemical sort of taste. I don't know. Maybe it's just my palate, but you know, you it, you feel a little bit funky. You kind of like, ah, this is a little bit, because they're doing some things to it to make it taste a certain way. This has a little bit of freshness to it, which I like. The oak is not obtrusive. It allows the pears, the apples, a little bit of lemon to come through. I don't like it. I'm going, to go, I'm going to go B minus on that one. I think it's a great deal. If you like a little bit of a buttery, kind of oaky Chardonnay for eight bucks, I think it's a good play. Yes, I'm going to go C plus, B minus on that one also. Let's move on to the Oak Grove Cabernet Sauvignon 2012. Here they go with the reserve again. I'm just saying, as a consumer, don't you know? Don't be fooled by the reserve label. Nothing against these guys. I mean, they're just, you know, they're dealing. They're playing with the cards that they're dealt with. You know, they're playing with the hand that they were dealt with. If you can do it, why not? Cabernet Sauvignon for eight bucks. California, they're all California. They can source their fruit from wherever they want. Nice cherries, a little bit of tobacco, a little bit of leather. Classic cab nose, quite interesting. Get a little bit of just a touch, just a slight, slight hit of cranberry.
Yeah. I, I'm curious about the alcohol in this because I'm getting a little bit of an alcohol hit, but I don't know. I'm not going to spend all day, guys. I'm sorry. I don't see it. I'm sure it's here somewhere, but I'm not going to waste your time. Okay. Anyway, just a little bit of a burn there. Yeah, cherries, currants, a little touch of vanilla. Let's see what we get on the palate. You know, decent structure. I get a little leather, tobacco, I get a little spice on the back end, a little white pepper. Definitely cherries and currants coming through. Decent balance. It's not complex, but you know what? It's not. It's not a bad Cabernet for eight bucks. Yeah, that would be great with a steak. You know, you don't want to spend any. You don't want to spend a bunch of money on wine, but you want to enjoy a bottle. Grab a bottle of Oak Grove. The spice is really nice on the backside. Get a little leather and tobacco. It's a little bit bright. It has a little bit of acidity to it, which is interesting. What vintage did I say this? This is a 2012. I touched thin on the mid palate, no doubt about it. You know, there isn't a lot of body to this wine, but it's got all the classic things you're looking for in a cab. And it's, you know, it's got good balance. It's not funky in any way. It's not, to me, it doesn't taste like a, you know, a fake. Doesn't have any makeup on it. No, I'm going to go B- minus on that one. I like that one. Let's move on to the next one. Okay, what direction did I go? Oh, now we're on to the Merlot. That was a 2012 cab. Let's see what vintage they're on. The ah, they're on 2012 also. Good for them. Merlot, of course, you know, as you know, doesn't always sell as fast as a cab. There you go. Same label. Not the best label in the world, like I said, but, you know, they don't spend a lot of money on packaging. They can keep the price down. 2012 Oak Grove. Ah, a little bit of stinkified action on it, which I like. A little bit of blackberry and currant. Yeah, this is a little stinky, which is interesting. Get a little tobacco on this one also. A little bit of rose petal. It's not hugely expressive. I'm just trying to grab these things out of the glass. It's taken me a little bit to do that, but, you know. Yeah, let's see what we get on the palate. A little rounder, a little fuller body, believe it or not, than the cab. Very spicy, like white pepper all day on the backside, which is interesting. I get currants, big time currants, you know, like ripe currants. A little bit of blackberry notes coming through. There's a little bit of worn leather. Gets a little grip on the back end. A little bit of red flowers coming through. You know, for eight bucks. For you anti Merlot persons, this is actually, I think, drinking just a skosh better than the cab. Has a little bit more fruit on it, but it's not a fruit. Don't get me wrong, it's not a fruit bomb by any stretch. They both have good structure, but this is a little fuller in the mid palate than the cab was. 
expands a little bit on the mid palate, which I find quite intriguing. The red flowers I really like on the nose and in the palate. Nice finish. Red flowers all day on the finish, which is really cool. You know, for eight bucks, Oak Grove really delivers. I'm gonna go B on the Merlot. I think it's a really for for eight bucks. I think it's a really decent bottle of wine. Uh, it's above average. I've, it's not thin. I mean, it's not huge, but for eight bucks, I think it deserves a B. I think they all deserve above average C pluses, B minus, B. They're all very good. You know, if you see a bottle of Oak Grove on the shelf with its kind of plain oval label with the Oak Grove on the front, don't shy away because of the price. You're looking at very drinkable, good wines for the dollar. Great for company, and I'm sure this summer you guys are planning on having some company over. You don't want to spend a boatload. You're having a wedding, you know, you, you, you want to buy some fairly inexpensive stuff, but good, look for Oak Grove. Good job, guys. Cheers, and here's to keeping the snob out of wine.